Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya 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 Om namo bhagavate Hare Krishna, we're studying from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 5, entitled Karma Yoga, Action and Krishna Consciousness, text 18. Vidya, Vidya Dinaya, Dinaya Sampane, Pramane, Gavi, Gavi Hastini, Hastini, Shuni, Shuni Cha. Eva, Swapake, Cha, Pandita, Samadarshina, Vijaya Vinaya Sampane, Vijaya Vinaya Sampane, Vamane Gavi Hastini, Vamane Gavi Hastini, Shri Cheva Swapake Cha, Pandita Samadarshina, Vijaya Vinaya Sampane, Vijaya Vinaya Sampane, Ramane Gavi Hastini, Ramane Gavi Hastini, Shuni Chaiva Swapake Chang, Pandita Samadarshina, Pandita Samadarshina, Vijaya Vinaya Sampane, Ramane Gavi Hastini, Ramane Gavi Hastini, Shuni Chaiva Swapake Chang, Pandita Samadarshina, Pandita Samadarshina, Vidya Vinaya Sampane, Vidya Vinaya Sampane, Ramane Gavi Hastini, Ramane Gavi Hastini, Shuni Chaiva Vijayavinaya Sampane, Vamane Gavi Hastini, Shuni Chaiva Sapake Cha, Pandita Samadarshina, Vijayavinaya Sampane, Ramane Gavi Hastini, Shuni Chava Shvapaka Pakecha, Shuni Chava Shvapakecha, Pandita Samadarshina, Pandita Samadarshina. Vidya Vinaya Sampane. Vidya Vinaya Sampane Ramane Ramane Gaiva Hastini, Ramane Gaiva Hastini, Shoni Chaiva Swapa Kecha, Shoni Chaiva Swapa Kecha, Pandita Samadarshina, Pandita Samadarshina. Would anyone else like to recite the verse? Okay, we'll go to the word for word. Vidya, Vidya. education, education. Dinaya. Dinaya, gentleness, gentleness. Sampane. Sampane, fully equipped, fully equipped. Brahmane. Brahmane, in the Brahman, in the Brahman. Brahman. Gavi. Gavi, in the cow, in the cow. Hastini. Hastini, in the elephant, in the elephant. Shuni. Shuni, in the dog, in the dog. 
Cha. 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 And? And? Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Sopake. Sopake. In the dog eater, the outcast. In the dog eater, the outcast. Cha. Cha. Respectively. Respectively. Pandita. Pandita. Those who are so wise. Those who are so wise. Samadarshina. Samadarshina. Do see with equal vision. Do see with equal vision. Translation. The humble sage, by virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahmin, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, outcast. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. A Krishna conscious person does not make any distinction between species or castes. The Brahmin and the outcast may be different from the social point of view, or a dog, a cow, or an elephant may be different from the point of view of species. But these differences of body are meaningless from the viewpoint of a learned transcendentalist. This is due to their relationship to the Supreme, for the Supreme Lord by his plenary portion as Paramatma is present in everyone's heart. Such an understanding of the Supreme is real knowledge. As far as the bodies are concerned in different castes or different species of life, the Lord is equally kind to everyone because he treats every living being as a friend yet maintains himself as Paramatma, regardless of the circumstances of the living entities. The Lord as Paramatma is present both in the outcast and in the Brahmin, although the body of a Brahmin and that of an outcast are not the same. The bodies are material productions of different modes of material nature, but the soul and the super soul within the body are of the same spiritual quality. The, simil the similarity in the quality of the soul and super soul, however, does not make them equal in quantity for the individual soul is present only in that particular body, whereas the Paramatma is present in each and every body. A Krishna conscious person has full knowledge of this and therefore he is truly learned and has equal vision. The similar characteristics of the soul and super soul are that they are both conscious, eternal and blissful. But the difference is that the individual soul is conscious within the limited jurisdiction of the body, whereas the super soul is conscious of all bodies. The super soul is present in all bodies without distinction. Om Ajnana Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuad Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayamupakada Mayam Dharati Svapadanti Kam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Saganaragna Tanvitam Tam Sajivam Sarve Tam Savadutam Parijana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Sri Visakan Vitamstra He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanshana Gaurange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpata Yubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyeva Cha Patitanan Bhavane Bhyo Vaisnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasari Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Javinaya Sampane, Brahmane Gavi Hastini, Shuni Chaivasva Pakecha Pandita Samadarshina, the humble sage by virtue of true knowledge sees with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahmin, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, an outcast. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. So this is sometimes referred to as the equal vision verse, equal vision. There's certainly a What's that? It was a 
it, yes, there was a band called Equal Vision. And um, as certainly a lot of talk about equality. So the concept is there. Concept is there. For example, like, even though you're Mexican and you're French and I'm American and, and, you're, and you're white and you're black and, and, and you're woman and I'm man, we can still all get together in peace and harmony. <clears throat> of course. <clears throat> yeah, well, I say not, of course. I say wrong. That'll fail every time. It's failed every time so far. Yes. Yeah, even though you're Indian <laughs> and I'm from Philadelphia, we can, no, we can't, no, it will fail every time. Uh, we can see that. <clears throat> okay. So why? Because, well, it's, it's biblical, the truth will set you free. Okay. So that whole concept of, yeah, even though you're Chinese and I'm Jewish and you're, we can still, that whole concept, it's based on falsity. So if we're starting in ignorance and falsity, then it's just not going to lead to a good result. Okay. We're starting with illusion. This morning in your class, Malin, you, you discussed the, the bird in the cage. But Prabhupada specifically says that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta would give, we're, we're not the, you know, we can have a red, blue, a red cage and a blue cage and a green cage, but we're, we're the bird, we're not the cage. Uh, mm, mm. As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from childhood to youth to old age, the soul simply passes into another body at the time of death. So, another analogy. So, the body is like a car. You also gave the analogy this morning. So, we, that someone could be driving a, a blue car, a red car. Right. If, I, if I'm driving in a Toyota and I'm thinking I'm Japanese, then the next day I get into a Volkswagen and I'm thinking I'm German. And the next day I get into a Renault and I think, no, I'm French. So we say, well, that's not you. This is the car. Right. So analogy means there's something we can easily understand. I'm not the car. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not, the, I'm not French because I'm the Renault. I'm not the car. We can easily understand that to help us understand something that's more difficult to understand that I'm not this body. I'm not this body. Hmm. So I'm the driver of the car. Okay. So if we're thinking we are the car, red, green, white, black, we're thinking we are the car. No, that, no, I was, I was, I was born in Florida. So I'm Floridian, born in India. So I'm Indian. Now that's just like thinking I'm, I'm, I'm a green German or I'm a red Japanese. It's just the car. So if that's if our starting point is that illusion, then there will not be peace and harmony. We're starting in ignorance. And just like if we start with the wrong numbers, we can follow a 10 step equation. It's not going to come out. <clears throat> some of you, some of you heard me share. This was in 2014. I was, I was conducting a presentation at, uh, uh, for the staff of a hospital in, it's called Golden Colorado. It was a veterans hospital, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> and I started the presentation. Mostly medical personnel, doctors, nurses, some psychiatrists, social workers. I started. I said, "Let's say someone comes to you. Let's say someone comes to you and says, I've hurt my finger.' Now, in that simple phrase, my finger." There are two entities. There's the finger and there's the owner of the finger. So I asked the doctors, the nurses, who are you treating? Are you treating the finger or the owner of the finger? They, they looked puzzled. The director of the hospital was there and he was like, well, David, that's, that's a very simple question. But you know, we've never thought about it. He said, and I said, yeah, well, it's, it's important. It's important because here's the thing. The finger essentially is made of the same stuff as this terrazzo floor or the window shape. It's dead matter. There is no healing force. There's no healing potency in the finger. The healing potency is in that, is in that irreducible quantum of consciousness that 
is the owner of the finger, the atomic unit of sentience that is the driver of the car. So this is the beginning of real knowledge. And without that, it's ignorance and attempts at equality and peace are, 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 are doomed to, to become um, continued festivals of misery. Okay? So, so this, this Bhagavad Gita as it is, ancient timeless wisdom given to us by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. This is, um, this, this provides for us uh, these vital distinctions, the difference between the, the self, the driver of the car and the car, the finger and the owner of the finger, the self and the body, the di distinction between spirit and matter. So this is primary. This is sometimes Prabhupada refers to this as the ABCs of spiritual life. And another important distinction in this verse in purport is the distinction between the self and let's call it the super self. Okay, yeah, we're not matter. That's important to get, right? That, yeah, we're not, we're not nothing. We're not matter. We are spirit. I am spirit. So I am the all pervasive, I am the all pervasive energy that, no, we're, we're spirit. We're not the supreme spirit. Jivaras Rupohari Krishnara Nichidas. So the nature of us, the nature of that spirit soul, that atomic unit of sentience that is us, is as servants of supreme spirit. So that's another important distinction. That's 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 another vital distinction. And Prabhupada gives some of the science. We're similar in some ways, just like the sun rays and the sun. Yeah, they're both illuminating and they're, they both uh, give off heat and they're both light and heat. So, so we, can, we can say even the sun rays are the sun. There's truth there. At the same time, there's a difference, right? There's a difference. So, so, the, so, so the, the sun rays are quite different than the sun globe too. This, the philosophy is called a chincha beta beta tattva, simultaneous oneness and difference. Sometimes in the Vedas, it might say things like tattva masi, you, you are that. And then some misinterpreted as like us, the individual souls, that we are, we are God. Just God is having a bad day and like forgetting that he or she is God. Just, you know, one of those days, you know, we, we all forget. That, yeah, but then you get, cause like forgetfulness, that's the force of illusion. So if God's falling into illusion, then illusion's greater than God. There's a problem there. Exactly, there's a problem. So it's kind of like an example we've been giving recently. It's just like, okay, like if we're at the beach together and uh, we might point and we go, ah, that's the ocean. Ah, there, that's the Pacific Ocean. That's the Atlantic Ocean. Now, actually in that pointing, all we're seeing is a sliver of a few miles in the horizon, right? But we, we say that's, that's the Pacific Ocean. Um, whereas actually the, the ocean is, is thousands of miles of beach and thousands of miles in, in depth and width, right? Uh, but still, we, we point to the sliver to indicate the whole thing, but that doesn't mean that the little sliver is the whole thing. So we're like a sun ray. So we're, we're like God in some ways. We're eternal, we're eternal full of knowledge and bliss. And at the same time, at the same time, we are infinitesimal, and uh, Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, is is um, um, infinite and is the source. Is that so? We are we are dependent. He is uh, Krishna's complete. Well, we can become free. We can become completely free by realizing our eternal nature as servants of Hare Krishna as servants of Krishna, and we learn to serve Krishna, we learn to serve God, Krishna is a name for God. We learn to serve Krishna by, um, by following someone who's like really good at it, someone who's perfect at it, just like in any, in any field, in any field, right? If we wanna learn physics, we find someone who's really good at physics, someone who's authorized, someone has a degree, someone who's written book, Someone who's the real thing. We want to become master in guitar, master in tennis. 
we, we, we find someone who's a master. So we're fortunate. We have our current link to the parampara, current link to the chain of, to the line of pure devotional teachers, our current link to the parampara, that Srila Prabhupada. And, and so we hear from him and Krishna consciousness, this bhakti yoga process, it's completely voluntary. And it's described that we are encouraged to give give a hundred percent in anything in life, right? The real results come when we commit fully. So we're encouraged, give ourselves fully. And I, I can say, if I look back over the 40 years, any, any time, energy, effort, resources, mind I've given to Krishna consciousness, to studying Prabhupada's books, to find this process of bhakti yoga, I have absolutely no regrets. And only, only gratitude for myself for, for doing that. And then I, then I get confused that, how come I don't do that more? Because like the results are all, always wonderful. I, I, whether I follow the process of bhakti yoga or I don't follow the process of bhakti yoga, I always get confirmation that this process is true. Because when I don't follow it, which is, you know, most times during the day, when I don't follow it, then I'm experiencing alienation from myself. I'm, I'm experiencing um, addic addiction to to toxic habits. I'm experiencing depression, resentment, petty stuff. And when I, when I choose bhakti yoga, like to some extent I am right now discussing Bhagavad Gita with everyone then I'm feeling enlivened, I'm feeling alive, I'm feeling vibrant, I'm experiencing myself as an eternal being, I'm feeling myself transcendental to fear, the process works. I have enough experience to say that. Yeah, and again, why, why I'm not giving anywhere near 100%, that's, I, need, I need some therapy about that, but whatever. So, okay, so then, so this is, this is, you know, knowledge means making distinctions and, and, and this is described that as spiritual beings, as spiritual beings in, let's call it a human car, a human vehicle, we have the special opportunity to discuss these sorts of subjects. What's the difference between matter and spirit? What happens at the time of the death of the body? Which is, it's a good question. At the same time, if we get more precise, the body is always dead. Just like the car is always dead matter. It appears animated when the driver's inside. So while the soul's inside, the body appears alive. Right? So these questions, what's the purpose of life? So, so the ancient wisdom traditions, they, they encourage us, give our lives, nayam deho deham bajam nuloke, to, to give our lives, not to not make the goal of life pleasures and gratifications that are available. The word used, vid bujame, that are available to the stool eaters. Pleasures from eating, sleeping, mating, defending. It doesn't mean to never eat, sleep, mate, or defend. And what it means to not make those pleasures the goal of life. Just like, okay, just like if I wanna drive from here in North Florida to New York. Okay, so um, yeah, yeah. So I wanna take care of my car. I wanna make sure it's clean and has gas. I wanna make sure the tires are safe. And like, I wanna take care of, I don't wanna neglect it. We don't wanna, we don't wanna neglect our eating, sleeping, mate, and defending. At the same time, it's not, it's not like, oh, oh, I hear there's a special deal on windshield wipers in Tennessee. Okay, let me go for it. Okay, and then again, oh, oh, okay, oh, oh there's a special car wash in, in Texas. Let me go there and kind of like, why are you, the goal's New York. I just give, give the attention necessary to care for the body, do it responsibly, but not to make that the goal. The goal is self-realization, the self turning towards itself and self-discovery and the self turning towards the Supreme, to Krishna in a devotional attitude to make that the goal each day of our life. Let, let, let me increase that. 
And in our relationships, in, in our relationships, we get to create, we get to make our relationships spiritual because the word spiritual, you know. So what we mean by spiritual, what Bhagavad Gita means, whereas that when we're relating with each other, as a result of the relationship, whether we're laughing or crying or we're silent together or we're discussing, or as a result of the relational interaction, we have deeper enthusiasm for self-realization and in devotional service to the Supreme, then that's spiritual. And if as a result of the relation, the interaction, then, then we have less enthusiasm, then it's material. We might have more enthusiasm for material sense gratification, which it's like, you know, going on a 2000 mile detour to get some windshield wipers for the car. So that's truly spiritual relationship. And that through, through relating, through deep understanding, Srila Rupa Goswami, he, he describes exchanges of love, exchanges of affection through for persons sincere about self-realization. So guyam akiti prichati, which means it's an essential part of this process of bhakti yoga to, to cultivate some expertise, to create relationships where it's a safe place to share the heart and mind confidentially and to inquire trust in a trusting environment safely, uh, to, to inquire confidentially. Yeah. And, and so I'm thinking of, and, and then in that process, the growth of the soul naturally happens. The growth of the soul naturally in that happen, in that space where we're fully received. And we call it, if, if I think of the career of Carl Rogers, Carl Rogers was a great psychologist and uh, in, in the Safatov community, we, we, we borrow a lot from Carl Rogers and the person-centered approach. And Carl Rogers, he actually started out in his early adulthood, he was uh, studying to be a Catholic priest. And then he started thinking about things and he, he rejected the idea and he became, I'll call it a secular humanist. And he's quite a leader in the secular humanist movement, very influential. And he, he, he decided he didn't believe in anything uh, non-material. And he was a very sensitive man, but philosophically he was a materialist. And he's the one who really emphasized this kind of empathic listening and, and things like that. And interestingly, if we read his later writings, if we read the later writings, like into the eighties of Carl Rogers, then he, he has articles where he says, he says, I can't help myself. Like I, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but in that deep empathic space, something non-material is happening. Call it spiritual, call it mystical, but he said it's not just an epiphenomenon of matter of atoms colliding. And so he, he, uh, he acknowledged that in this, not that he created it, but he really revealed for many millions of people this process of avoiding roadblocks to communication and, and deep listening and like to to not speak till you've confirmed, I won't speak till you've confirmed that you're hundred percent understood. He said, and in that, in that rigorous space, you know, something spiritual gets revealed and something spiritual happens. And he said like, yeah, like despite myself, I have to admit that that's happening there. So you can see that, yeah. Yeah, there's another, another leader in the, um, in the history of personal growth is, uh, Alexander Everett. He's, he's really the father of the human potential movement. He was from Britain, from, he was British. And like in the 1950s, as a young man, he came to, uh, came to the United States. And like the first personal transformation company was called Mind Dynamics. It was founded by Alexander Everett. His students included like Werner Erhard, who established Est and then Landmark and John Hanley who established Lifespring and others. He was really the father. 
And he also came for, from a very humanistic place, meaning uh, non-spiritual like that, secular humanism. So about 12 years ago, I was very interested to read on the internet. I, I found an article about Alexander Everett and he, he had passed away. He had passed away a little before this article was written. So the article glorified him, described his life. And very interestingly, at the end of his life, his last years, he was traveling around the world, facilitating seminars. And the main process he conducted in his seminar was he was teaching people to chant Jai Ram Shri Ram, Jai Ram Shri Ram, Jai Ram Shri Ram, Jai Ram Shri Ram. Ram. So this is very significant for me to use a metaphor that Prabhupada uses a lot. Like if we have a string of zeros, 10 zeros, 100 zeros, what's the value? The value is zero. But if we put a one in front, then the one gives value and it becomes a huge number, becomes a very big number. Yes, Ram Ram, yes. And yes, okay, so that one, that self-realization, that's realizing who we are as the owner of the finger, not the finger. And this process, so Alexander Everett, he found this process of genuine mantra chanting, right? And, it, and Jai Ram Shri Ram, this is a mantra. So it's described in the Kali, in the Kali Santarana Upanishad, Vidi Shodashakam Nam Nam Kali Kamasana Shanam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That especially in all the time, and especially in this age, chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it's described as the most powerful force, the most powerful way to realize equal vision. To, 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 well, for, it, it's good to have intellectual realization. I'm not the body, I'm soul. But then if I look at the day, how much of the day am I acting like I am the body, like I am the car? So to get realization of who we are as spirit soul, as eternal servants of God, to get realization. And then that realization, then naturally we're, we're, we'll, we'll be free of greed and propensity to exploit others and free from ignorance and envy. All of that anxiety stuff the root cause of all anxiety is misidentification of the eternal spirit soul with the temporary body. We could analyze that in detail, but that's just a fact. To the extent that I'm misidentific misidentifying the self with the temporary body, I will be in anxiety, even if I go to therapy for 12 years or whatever. Okay? It's just a fact. And so this is a brilliant process brilliant process. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, even, I, I, so, uh, even like this is, this is the equal vision first verse. I know my graduate degrees, master's and PhD, it's, it's really, it, it's in, it's in the profession that probably more than any other profession is dedicated to remove inequality from the world so that the, the weak are not oppressed by the strong. It's called social work, right? Social work. Actually, in a, in a Back to Godhead article from the 1944, in an early Back to Godhead article, Prabhupada does some analysis of Madame Blavatsky's theosophy. And he appreciates, he quotes some representative of the theo, theosophists saying that um, something like, we will not rest at night. We will not rest peacefully until the weak are not oppressed by the strong. And, and you know, we, we will shed tears of compassion as long as there is inequality and like that, okay. and oppression and exploitation. So Prabhupada writes, yeah, well, that's a nice sentiment. But the Vaishnava view is different. The Vaishnava view is different. The Vaishnava view is we're dedicated to make everyone so strong that they won't be oppressed. 
So strong, meaning so strong in realization of who I am as a spirit soul. And then I have, don't have these bodily attachments, then you can't touch me, right? Because we, we allow ourselves to get exploited and cheated and victimized because of our greed, because of our desire, because of our attachment to injury, our attachment to approval. Can't can, can I just belong to the club? I'll, I'll degrade myself in any way you want if I can just belong to the club, please. Our attachment to money, to popularity, to compliments. Right? So the self, it's called Atmaram, Atmaram Astramunayo, Nigranti, Yurukrame, Kavati, Tukim, Bhakti, Itam, Bhutto, Gunohari. Our nature is self satisfied. That um, if all we, all I want is to serve Krishna and, and, and that, might, that might make me popular or unpopular, I just want to serve Krishna. We always have full opportunity to do that and nothing can get in the way except ourselves if we have some other desire. That's straight. That's, that's what it means to be unstoppable. And then from that platform of consciousness, then I'm not going to I'm, I'm going to see everyone equal as the driver of the car. Different bodies, and we relate to different bodies in different ways, always with the one goal that when, whether you're in the body of a cow, an elephant, a, a, a rich person, a poor person, a Toyota, a Lexus, a Dodge, whatever, whatever body you're in. Well, I, I quoted that earlier today. Just It said, like, a parent, a parent treats all their children equally by treating them differently, right? So, so I'm going to treat, I'm going to re respond to someone in such a way to support them in their self-realization, their purification of heart, their turning to God with a devotional attitude. That's love, that's friendship. Anything else, it might look nice. Really though, it's violence. So this is, cultivating the art of true love, true friendship, then even, yeah, even if we won't want to exploit the animals to satisfy some bumps on the back of our tongue. I was, again, in, in the uh, field of social work. Actually, I, in, in January 2000, in the, in the journal called Social Work, which is the biggest journal in the field, they published an article I wrote called Social Work and Speciesism. So back around 98, 99, I first got the idea of that article and I, I did some research. I, I've been, I was actually, I was at a conference, I was teaching a conference in North Carolina and I had like a, a break for a few hours and I went to the University Library of North Carolina and I did some research and I found in this field of social work, and this is like the field that's really opposed to all the isms, nationalism and sexism and racism. So I looked and there was nothing in the whole literature of social work about like speciesism and then further so it's the founding mother of, mo mo of modern social work her name is jane adams her name is jane adams and her history is very interesting she was born in chicago in like the mid 1800s to a very affluent american family a very affluent american family jane adams and she didn't have to work and she was with some friends and they were like maybe in her young adulthood and they were vacationing in Spain and they went to the bullfights. They went to the bullfights in Spain. And Jane Adams saw what they did to the bulls and she was horrified. She was horrified at the way they were treating the bulls and it was transformational for her. And then she, she just got like, I don't want to just waste my life, you know, enjoying this and that. I don't want to waste my life doing this. And it moved her to compassion. And she, she started the first social work organization. It was called, it was called Whole House in Chicago. And so, so to, to, she, cause she really wanted to give her life to help people, not just be this parasite rich person. So in my article, Social Work and Speciesism, I said, maybe Jane Adams just got it wrong. Maybe she's just off base having compassion for animals. She's the founding mother of the whole profession. So I said, or maybe she knew something there. Right? Maybe she 
she had some knowledge with Bhagavad Gita. Wherever there's consciousness, it means there's a spirit soul. And so, uh, and actually, I, I look on the internet sometimes, and that, that article, they use it in university courses and things like that. Because um, like, okay, if we're going to be against oppression, well, why, why oppress another species? Uh, just because we want to satisfy some bumps on the back of our tongue. Um, okay. Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Gavihastini Shinichi Vasa Pakicha Pandita Samadarshina, the humble sage by virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahmin, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, outcast. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for your association and presence. I welcome at this time if anyone would like to share any comments or realizations or ask any questions. in person or online. Can you, um, can you state again what it was that Prabhupada said um, about, I, I don't want to hear it again, um, about the intention of making- Everyone so strong. Over. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that question. Thank you, Payal. Okay. Yeah, so Prabhupada, this is in an, a Bhakti Godhead article. From, Sorry, would you repeat the question, please? Yeah. We didn't hear it. Hale asked me to speak more about what Prabhupada said in, in his article about theosophy, about the Vaishnava approach isn't to so much to protect the weak from oppression from the strong. The Vaishnava approach is to make everyone so strong they won't be oppressed. Right, so it's so out of the box, so brilliant. So, yeah, so strong. Actually, I mean, there's a, there's some, um, one of the, maybe the first movie biography of Prabhupada came out in the late 70s. And they're, interest, they're interviewing some big Indian, you know, mid billionaire, I think his name is Burla or something. Okay, some big like that. And they're interviewing him. And he said, He's, he, in the interview, he, he, he's interviewed about Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He goes, you know, I'm a, I'm a businessman. So what I do is I find people's weakness, I find their attachment, then I exploit it. And so that's what I try to do with uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami. And I met with him. I went with him many times. I, I met with him over years and years. And I could not find a trace of greed in him. I couldn't find any lust, no envy. No, no escapism, no complacency. There was just nothing to grab onto. His, and then, then at some point I had to realize this is a pure saintly person. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's a basic principle is, is that which we want to control, controls us, right? I'll be happy and satisfied and secure and peaceful and I'll know I'm lovable and valuable if she just likes me, if he just, if he just looks at me, if I just can earn $200,000 a year, if I just had that car, then I'll be lovable and important and powerful, right? And then that car or that, that person smiled at me, I'm happy. Oh, now he's not smiling at me. Now I'm sad, right? Whatever we try to control materially, it controls us. So, so through this process of bhakti yoga, we truly, free ourselves, not in an artificial way, not, not like with a spiritual bypass, but we free ourselves from, from material desires, gross and subtle. Subtle material desires are things like desire for profit, adoration, distinction, compliments, uh, popularity, you know, that sort of thing, that's subtle. So we free ourselves from that. But the thing is, we, we cannot and do not exist in a vacuum. So yes, because there are some philosophies, the idea is become desireless. It's a really nice idea. The only problem with that is that it's, it's impossible, completely categorically impossible. But otherwise, great idea, right? So no, it's a, our nature is to desire, that's not a bad thing. So 
the solution is to transform the quality of our desire from material. Material desire means that which we desire, we are then a slave of that. And then we will be oppressed. We will be oppressed, guaranteed, right? Because we're, we're trying to cheat our own spiritual nature. And then we're setting ourselves to be, to be cheated by others. And we will cheat others, right? It's one thing to see how I've been cheated, I've been victimized. And as we're further along on the path of wisdom, then we see, oh, and I've cheated others and I've victimized others. To be victim was for my enjoyment, <clears throat> maybe in nice ways or not so nice ways, right? So, so, we tri so, so the thing that my bliss is in serving Srila Prabhupada, John may John may Prabhu say, birth after birth, birth, Chakudana Dune, John may John may Prabhu say, to, to serve Prabhupada birth after birth, right? So, so that's my desire. And by serving Prabhupada, I'm pleasing God, I'm pleasing Krishna. Nothing, nothing can take, no pandemic can interfere with that. No disease of the body, no economic downturn, no insult, no calamity, right? So that's, that's a happiness, that's a bliss that nothing material can crush. Nothing will ever destroy it if I'm sincere. That strength, that strength, that then nothing can interfere with my joy, my peace, my bliss, my power. Whatever calamity you can imagine, whatever terrible material event you can imagine. And to the extent that we're seeking our happiness, joy, bliss, peace, inner security in anything that will ever be crushed by time. And then we'll be exploited, we'll be oppressed, we'll be in anxiety, guaranteed. Bhakti yoga, devotional service, that's it's the term transcendental, means it will never be crushed by time, it's absolute, it's the nature of the soul in all time and space. So go for that and then we're then we're um, young, then we're invincible. Thank you for your question, Pai. Uh, Ramachandra. Hare Krishna, David. Um, thank you for, for the class, the equal vision, like expressing how many people in in different fields basically miss miss it out because they're not not connecting to to the essence of what Krishna is trying to express to us in the in the Bhagavad Gita, like the really the essence of the equal vision. And I I guess especially the, the example you share a lot about the social uh, the article in social work uh, always kind of stands up for me in that connection. And I was wondering in terms of someone who is materially conditioned where does equal vision starts for him like is it vegetarianism social work um what is that um um, um pacifism pacifism you know okay uh, thanks thank you thank you ramachandra i appreciate your question right because i used the term a few moments ago spiritual bypass right yeah we don't we don't because like yeah, this is such a powerful verse, such an amazing verse. And I don't want to pretend that I'm realizing it. I, I, I know it's true. And um, I have more realization of it than I did 40 years ago or even 10 years ago. So that's nice. So my, my response to that Ramachandra, that whatever, cause I'm, you know, I'm in that category. I'm a materially conditioned person. I don't, I have far from full realization of this verse. I'm materially conditioned. So wherever someone's at, in whatever mixture of the lower modes of nature, the yeah the 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 solution is knowledge. The, the, the solution is knowledge, and so you know back in in the nineties as part of my PhD program, I developed the Vedic personality inventory based on the psychology of Bhagavad Gita, based on the precept that everything everything in the material world. Maya itself is made of the three gunas, tamas or inertia, rajas or dyna dynamism, and sattva or enlightenment. And so 
my intent in developing that personality inventory was to establish an empirical basis for happiness. Uh, meaning that, and, and the statistical analysis confirmed the Vedic assertion that to the extent that one develops sattvic worldviews and habits that corresponds positively with all the experiences people are looking for, peace, equality, harmony, and um, uh, contentment, and like that, fulfillment, satisfaction. So knowledge, and knowledge means that from wherever we are, if, if not transcendence, at least move towards sattva. Yeah, and that, that might take the form, it might take the form of, of, for sure, of consuming a more sattvic diet, you know, the ideal diet is 100% prasada. But if not, uh, in, in terms of social work, Prabhupada would say, you know, trying to make, you know, Bhakti Siddhartha said, the world stands in no need of any reformer. Okay, meaning that, you know, everything's perfect and complete. And in response to the perfection and completion, it's important to know, okay, what's my role? What's my service? So if our attempts at helping are mostly in rajas or tamas, and this is why it's important to know the science of the gunas, to know the science, what is tamasic, what is rajas, what is sattvic, what is shuddha sattva, transcendental. In shuddha sattva, it's not just sattva without any tinge of rajas and tamas. Shuddha sattva is an entity unto itself by which Krishna reveals himself. So, um, so to the extent that our efforts to help are influenced by Thomas and Rajas, we're almost surely doing more, more harm than good. Simple example, like, oh, I wanna, I wanna give charity. Oh, there's, there, there's a homeless person on the street, you know, here, here's $20. No, I'm not, maybe some homeless pe people will use that in wonderful ways. I'm just giving an example. And then he goes and buys crack cocaine and sells it to teenagers in the high school. But I'm, I'm sitting at home thinking, wow, I did, I did good social work. I'm, I'm an amazing person, actually. Okay? But actually, I'm doing more, har more harm than good because it's the Rajas Thomas. So, and Prabhupada said, okay, real good is transcendent, supporting each other to get out of the cycle of John Mamritu, Jaravya, Dukkha Dosha, Anudarshan, get, get out of the cycle of birth, death, old age, disease through devotional service and, 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 and reclaim our timeless nature eternally. But Prabhupada said, okay, if it's not transcendence, at least if it's sattvic, then some, there's some good. There's some good there. There's some good there. Mm. So that's the principle. And yeah, it, it might look like a more sattvic diet, like vegetarian rather than hamburgers at the burger joint, you know, which is really lower mode. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I might look like, yeah, giving up intoxication habits, just com coming to higher mode, if not transcendence, at least sattva. Yeah. Thank you, Dira. Thank you, Ramachandra. In terms of uh, uh, spiritual bypass, sometimes I found that some people, um, in Gainesville it's common, um, some people, when they see that devotees are not involved in social change, they see that as a weakness or a sense of um, kind of going to spiritual life, but not being connected with real life. Yeah. And not being conscious of racism and you know, all the social issues that people are concerned with. And then when, uh, when responding with a spiritual perspective that, well, if you start with the wrong numbers, if you start with like, yeah, even so we are black and you are white, we can get along together. Then just starting from there, it's in the starting point, you, you're really focusing on what's not equal and what's is changeable and temporary 
and then that's not going to bring you to the to relate to the soul in each person's life so that's clear but then when presenting that paradigm often we get criticized for like either you have activists social activists or you are spiritualist but where is the balance between the two Okay. I, I heard that many times in Gainesville, at least. Okay. With the Gainesville crowd. Gainesville crowd. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Well, you know, for, for those who are aspiring to, you know, to practice Krishna consciousness, you know, in some cases, we, you know, we can look at that. Maybe I am escaping, you know, in, in the name of spiritual life. Maybe I am escaping being a responsible person with social conscience. We can all look at that individually. One practical response I like, like I see a uh, Rohini and Prampara are here. So Prampara and I, five years ago, we went, we went to Bangalore. And, that, and for me, this is, this is, this is very relevant. Cause you say, okay, like, okay, well, but you're not really doing something practical. Yeah. Yeah. You, you banged your car tolls and uh, this and that, but what do you do? Really help? Okay. So like, like it's a thing that people say, really help people like, like feed hungry children. You don't do any of that. <clears throat> right. Yeah, th th thank you. So, um, right, so then I'm, I'm just giving this as an example. Okay, so these are practitioners of Bhakti Yoga, followers of Prabhupada, and they, they, they've established uh, an organization called Akshaya Patra, and they, uh, and they, they, well, okay, they still do at a lesser extent, but before the pandemic, they were feeding close to 2 million school children in India per day. All push out them, but they would never. They, they, they would just, just like if you take the spiritual part out, like okay, who who in Gainesville is doing that? Yeah, where is the activist doing so much good? Just forget about spirituality. And the statistics, the statistics, statistics that I heard are, yeah, well, they they, they feed close to two million per day, and this and per day, not per year, not per decade, per day. And the statistics are, are that in India, 2 million children per day, 2 million children per day die because of malnutrition and starvation. And if it were not for this organization, Akshaya Patra, it would be 5 million. Uh, no, uh, 2,000 per day die. And if it were not for this organization, it would be 5,000. Okay, so because they do what they do, 3,000 children per day don't die. They not just don't die, but they get nourishing food and they get an education because the way it works in India is that the family doesn't have money. So they'll, they'll send the eight year old out to work some job, or maybe, maybe not a decent job to bring in money. So they don't get education, even if they don't starve. So they get an education and they get food, which happens to be vegetarian spiritual food, and they get material education. They also learn Bhagavad Gita. They get spiritual education. So 3,000 children per day don't die. So I'm just using it. So these are com completely, these, this whole organization, we, we taught foundational courses to their managers. They're all followers of Prabhupada, completely spiritual. So I'm just giving that as, ex as an example. And, and from the very beginning, Prabhupada said that it, 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 no one, 10 miles of any of his centers should go hungry. So on an individual basis, yeah, look, am I doing a spiritual bypass in the name of I'm a devotee, so then I'm not being responsible and socially conscious? Yeah, individually, I, I want to look at that and you know, we can probably all benefit from looking at that. But if we look practically, even if we take out the spiritual component, who's, who's, doing, who's doing even, even a, a tenth of a percent of that? in Gainesville to, to actually help starving children. So there's an example. All right. Thank you, Marlene. Yeah, I, I, I remember I once shared the story of King Vena and the, my agenda behind sharing the story was how the Brahmanas lost their, the nectar of their Satvagun or whatever they had because they neglected the general populace and they neglected benefiting them. Prabhupada, I think he, he says both spiritually and materially, 
So that was kind of interesting and maybe somehow it relates. Thanks for that, Ramachandra. From the fourth canto of Bhagavatam. From the fourth canto of Bhagavatam. Yes, the Brahmins could see that they're responsible also for, for, for the material well being. Brielle. Oh, I just wanted to comment on Molly's thing about um, the way that I see integration is just like in the Sakhya Samaras. Yeah. How it's like we're spiritual beings, but then there's all this muck of conditioning covering yeah. the soul. And then the incarnated soul needs empathy to help wash that away so that they can feel free enough to actually start thinking about God. And I'm not sure about environmental issues, but at least social issues, that's how I see, you know, outside of like, you should do this, you should do that. I think there's just being a compassionate yeah. person and like feeling deep love and empathy for someone suffering, which is like psychological suffering, like people go to the Sattva for seminars yes. or, or like a different kind of psychological yeah. suffering that comes from oppression. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just think a lot of people who do spiritual bypass, myself included, that it's something that's missed, but it could be like put in a different category. Like we see Sakato stuff as like this integration, but somehow we don't include the social stuff in that, but it's just trauma that we're trying to heal people yes. so that they can be free to think about yeah. God. So it's like we, it's like in, actually what we're doing in Sakato is we're almost helping them identify with the body with their emotions, like helping them feel, like experience their human experience. Experience their human experience. So yeah. that they can be free to not identify with their human experience. Yeah. And it's the same thing with social issues. Yeah. Helping them like experience the pain of their oppression human experience so that they can be free to not identify with yeah. the color of the skin or whatever anymore. So. Yeah, too. Yeah, we're, we're not the car. It's important to know our car. So that, that's a lot of what we do. And that 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 relieves, uh, relieves so much torment, so much suffering. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Thank you, Brio. Thank you. Any any other comments or questions? Hare Krishna Prabhu, yes, I have a question. This verse is saying about the learned person having the same vision, and this is connected with a picture in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, where it's seeing the super soul in the heart of the cow and the elephant, the dog, the dog eater like that. So is, should we be taking this literally that we can develop a vision with these physical eyes where we're seeing Paramatma in the heart of every living thing, or we are taking it as like also the term Jnana Chakshusha, that we're seeing through the eyes of knowledge. So is it just a philosophical seeing or an actual physical seeing that philosophically we're seeing the Lord is in the heart of every living thing, the also, the jivatma is in the heart of every living thing, or like that, physical, or or both. Is it is it seeing philosophically and physically, or is it one or the other? Or thank you, Prabhu. I appreciate your question, and thank you, Malini, for showing the the painting, the equal vision painting. Yeah. So I my understanding is that it's it's both that like it's uh it. Jnana Chakshu, see with the eyes of knowledge. See with the eyes of knowledge. Like, okay, yeah, I'm not like seeing the soul, but I, I understand. Just like, let's say, uh, uh, Malini, I know what her car looks like. So let's say I see this white Camry passing on the road far away. I might say, oh, there's Malini. Now, I'm not actually seeing Malini, but I'm seeing the, the car. And I know inside there, there's Malini. So we, no, we don't see the driver. We, we, we know there's a driver. So, Jnana Chakshus. And then my understanding, it's, it's also direct that as we develop Atashri Krishna Namadi Nambak Bhaved Grayam Indriya Sevin Mukhi Hidjivadal Svayam Eva Sparat Yada. 
as we advance in Krishna consciousness, our senses become purified. And then it's not with the physical eyes. Prabhupada has a, I think it's a, a lecture excerpt. He was giving a lecture in Montreal or somewhere. And he goes, yeah, it's, we don't see spirit with the physical eyes, with this, uh, with this ball made of gelatin in the socket of liquid. No, Prabhupada says like that. No, but the spirit soul has eyes. The spirit, spirit soul has spiritual eyes and spiritual ears and spiritual sense of smell and spiritual mind. And so as we become purified, then with our spiritual senses, not physical eyes, with our spiritual senses, like when, when Krishna says, Prajakshava gamam dharmyam shushu kam kartum aviyam, Krishna says that this, this is the perfection of religion because it's directly perceived. He's talking about the spirit soul experience, experiencing itself as spirit soul and, and, and seeing with spiritual eyes, seeing Krishna with spiritual eyes, seeing each other with spiritual eyes and tasting prasad with a spiritual tongue. So at some level of purification, then we are directly experiencing the soul. Till then, till then, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, well, I'm seeing through the eyes of knowledge, just like, yeah, seeing through Jnana Chakshush, I like that reference, just like a little child might see the sun as a circle in the sky about three inches in diameter. Now, with these physical eyes, we also see the sun as a circle in the sky about three inches in diameter, but we don't see the sun as three inches. We're seeing with the eyes of knowledge and we know, oh, this is actually a stellar body that's a million times greater in biome than the earth. It's this huge, immense stellar body because we're seeing with the eyes of, of scientific knowledge. So yeah, so it's not like with our physical eyes, we're seeing that huge sun, but we're seeing with the eyes of knowledge. So, so, so I, that, that's a beginning to, to have some intellectual understanding and to endeavor to see inside the body of the squirrel and the neighbor as a spirit soul. And then as we get purified, we have more and more of an experience with our, a direct experience with our spiritual senses of spirit soul. That's my understanding. Thank you. Laura. Um, I like what you just said. Yeah, seeing with the spiritual eye and, and what I'm seeing the first, right? Seeing, yeah, seeing everyone with equal vision. Um, there was something that you said um, earlier in the talk, like, uh, like not serving the material or something, because if we serve the, the material, it, it'll come back or something that you said. Yeah. But what that sparked was just this question. I'm still like right in of okay, um, in this in these practices serving God, serving Krishna, chanting practice, eating prasadam, reading, and I'm finding um, value in, in all that. But there's still this like, okay, well, well then we are in this material world, which is also all spiritual, and there is some service we are all meant to do, but like, isn't that still going to be hmm, like it's still that, that's still a material service rather than just doing spiritual practice. I'm a little, I'm getting a little no, it's, thoughts, but I'm, I'm no, just, no, it, it, I think I see where you're going with your question. That it's so, like, let's say we have money in the bank or we have a car in our name or a house in our name. So, like, okay, so like this house, right? So, you can say this is a material floor, these are material walls. Mm -hmm. No, they're not. Because we're using them for kirtan. We're using them to glorify Krishna. We're, we're discussing the philosophy of God. Mm -hmm. So this becomes a spiritual floor. This become, these become spiritual walls. Similarly, our, if we use our car mm -hmm. to drive to the bar or the, the club to do some material dancing, mm -hmm. then it's material. It's material tires, it's material spirit stream. If we use our car to drive to a, a discussion on Bhagavad Gita, to glorify Prabhupada, then the car is spiritual. That's that's how we spiritualize the, the world. That's how to to learn the science, learn the art of how to use everything in a 
spiritual way, in a way that is bhakti yoga, in a way that is service. Right. Spiritualizing the world in, in a in bhakti service. I like that. And 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 then there's this whole discussion, right, of the social workers and then the question about well, well what what are we not doing or what well, all these things that can be done and you gave that example so my mind went to there like oh right like there's so much that can be done so much but it's i understand it's like um i could think about all the things that need to be done but it's, unless i'm like choosing if that's my service then go do it but there's no point of just perseverating and worrying about all that because everything is perfect and okay but also like unless i'm going to do something where am I going with this? Well, as we, as we um, chant Hare Krishna, follow Prabhupada more and more, we get more and more realization yeah. of how to transform matter into spirit okay. in, in our profession, yeah. in our hobbies, in our relationship, in our family. And so, because it, it's, it's not so much about what we do, yeah. it's about what's the being, what's the quality of our consciousness. And then if our quality of our consciousness, to the extent that our quality of our consciousness is connected with this higher timeless intelligence, then we get natural realization how to transform matter into spirit increasingly in all areas of our life. Yeah, I can feel that and sense that. And I think for some reason today, whatever was sparked, like there was some worry or fear coming in. And also I, I see that it requires patience and trust in that process. And but I think the fear was like, oh yeah, someone says like, well, you're not doing anything, whether to me or someone else, but it's, yeah, all, all in our own timing in certain ways. But um, I think you answered where I was going with that. I appreciate your realization, Laura. A, a great bhakti yogi from a few hundred years ago, Srila Rupa Goswami, he described utsahan nishtara daya tat tat karma pravartana. He described different ways of being that are very important and favorable to progress on this path. And one of them, Darya, is patience. Mm. Enthusiasm, patience, and uh, to be conscious, to, to be conscious about our association. It's a whole science. And he said, yeah, but pa patient, patience is very important if we want to steadily progress. Thank you, Laura. Thank you all for your association. Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.